You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 5th of December and I'm Roland from Milford. The key economic news domestically was the Australian inflation print for October, which saw annual inflation slow to 6.9% from 7.3% in September. This was also significantly softer than the 7.4% expected. Now, this metric is new and has many nuances. For example, only about half of the basket of goods and services is actually collected and measured for this monthly data print. The 48% which isn't collected is assigned a 0% price change. Hence, true inflation could be higher or lower than implied by this incomplete print. Nonetheless, it does support the argument that inflation could be peaking. Breaking it down, fruit and vegetables were cheaper. However, this will reverse given the floods. New dwellings were softer than anticipated, but this doesn't include apartments. And holiday travel was also quite soft, but this is due to the cessation of holiday pricing. So you'd expect this to increase in coming months. Turning to the US, the Personal Consumption Expenditure Index was released for the month of October, which is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. This too exhibited signs of slowing inflation, with core monthly PC inflation of 0.2% versus 0.3% expected and 0.5% in the prior month. Powell in a speech did however highlight that the US was far from price stability and that it will take substantially more evidence to provide comfort that inflation is actually declining. The US ISM manufacturing PMI was released and came in at 49 versus 49.6 expected. A reading below 50 implies manufacturing activity is contracting and above 50 implies expansion. This is the first contraction since May 2020. Breaking this down, new orders went deeper into contractionary territory. Production expanded but at a slower pace, employment fell into contractionary territory, and delivery times improved month on month. Non-farm payrolls were also released in the US and came in very strong at 263,000 jobs added in November versus 200,000 expected. The unemployment rate came in at 3.7% and average hourly earnings increased a significant 0.6% month on month versus 0.3% expected. This implies wage inflation is running at 7.2%, which is uncomfortably high. Turning to equity news, Domino's Pizza raised $150 million at a tight 2% discount to fund the acquisition of the remaining interest in Domino's Germany, plus pay down some debt. The acquisition of the remaining stake in Domino's Germany was forced on the group, given the previous owner had a put option. Collins Food, the operator of KFCs in certain Australian states and some European countries, reported their first half result with strong same-store sales being more than offset by margin compression from higher operating costs. The company fell 20% on the day of its result. SmartPay, a dual list in New Zealand and Australian company, reported a very strong set of results with revenue up 68%, gross profit up 67%, and EBITDA up 119% over the prior year. Fisher & Paykel Healthcare reported their first half result beating analyst expectations by a few percentage points. The stock rallied strongly in the back of the result, up 10% on the day and up 16% for the week. This was not only due to the better than expected results, but also due to comments that their end customers are working through the big build-up in inventory accumulated during COVID, which bodes well for sales in the consumables division. Gentrack, another New Zealand business, reported a very strong result, with the company upgrading their medium-term revenue targets. They now expect to generate $150 million in sales in FY24, up from $130 million. Looking to the week ahead, domestically, the RBA is expected to release their interest rate decision on Tuesday, with the market expecting them to raise interest rates by 25 basis points to 3.1%. Australian third quarter GDP data will be released, with annual GDP growth of 6.3% expected. It's important to note, the prior period was impacted by lockdowns, so the 0.7% quarter-on-quarter growth rate expected is more relevant. In the US, the ISM Services PMI is to be released, which will give us a sense of how the services sector in the US is performing. Also in the US is the Producer Price Index data, which measures the change in price producers receive for their output and is generally a leading indicator for CPI. It is expected to come in at 0.2% month on month. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.